Good morning. I'm Brad, and this is my wife, Shauna. I'm the pastor here, and I thought the best way to spend time with her on Mother's Day during church is just to have her up here with me. In fact, the opposite is true. I'm actually up here with her today. I decided we, we were talking about Mother's Day and Father's Day and what to do this year, and we thought, why don't we just have a conversation about motherhood on Mother's Day and then fatherhood on Father's Day? This is weird. I'm always on the left. You're all... I'm always on the left. Do you want to move? I want to move. Okay, we're going to move because it's, it's Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. So now watch. On, okay. On, <laughs> on Father's Day... I'll Are, be on the she left. Gonna, she's not going to let me sit there on Father's no. Day either. I'm just saying. But <laughs> okay. So we decided we're going to have this conversation. Um, I, and I, I wanted to say that, you know, in my humble opinion, this lady right here is like the most awesome mother on earth. However, you should know that as we were preparing for this, one of the things she just she said a couple of times sort of under her breath was I am so not the right person for this So so she's not coming up here that because she thinks she's an expert. She's up here because I think she is okay uh, No, honestly, um, there's no one right way to mother um, But sometimes we don't talk uh, Just talk about motherhood and fatherhood and the the ups and the downs So what we're going to talk about today is I'm just going to ask her some questions about some of the different phases that we've gone through with motherhood and and She's gone through. I've watched, supported with motherhood, and and then some some of the struggles she's had in in the midst of that. What and some of the the joys that she's experienced in in the mothering journey. And I also want to say this: that you, if you're if you're female here this morning, you have whether or not you will ever have kids, you have been given by God a mothering heart. That the world needs. Amen. And probably everyone in this room has experienced what it feels like to be mothered or nurtured or cared for by someone who isn't even your mom, mm -hmm. right? And so let's just celebrate that. We're going to talk about motherhood because that's our context, but if, if, or if you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you're grieving the loss of a mom or you're, you're desperately wanting to be a mom and you can't or all of those things, I want to just I want to bless you. We want to celebrate with you, like, just who you are and your journey. We want to support you. And, and we in no, one, in no way want to minimize your life and your path. However, I think sometimes in our culture we get so concerned about not offending people or not that we don't honor very important things like motherhood and fatherhood. So we can't just not do it, right? So that's what we want to do today. So Jesus, would you please give us the words and help us to share what is on your heart in particular? Thank you for Shauna and her amazing mommying in our family. And I just pray that if there's something here for someone or each of us, just we would grab hold of something in Jesus' name. So um, what I wanted to share to begin with is that the, the scriptures do actually talk about very different roles that moms and dads take. And this, this has nothing to do with working outside the home. This has to do with how we're wired and how God postures us to have an impact on kids. I, if I were a single dad, I couldn't mother. I would do my best as a single dad right? There's something about who Shauna is and what, how she's made that God brings to the table that is irreplaceable. And so it's, we can play these roles, right, like more motherly or fatherly roles. And, and I just wanted to read a, a scripture that the Apostle Paul talks about. He talks about discipling believers and, and these group, this group of believers in the Thessalonica that he was, he was mentoring, and he actually talked about sort of the essence of motherhood, in, in, as he saw it at least, and, and this is inspired by God, so it's, it's awesome. But he talks about, he says, as apostles of Christ, when they were there, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives. That word can be translated our soul, our breath, like our essence, right? To share not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and our hardship. We worked night and day. Uh, 
moms ring a bell. <laughs> we work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. So in, in the context of this, this journey, I, when I think of this verse, I think, I think of this lady right here. I think of my mom. Make, you're thinking of someone right now. And, and before we get any further, I just want to say, make sure you thank the ladies in your life for the mothering roles that they've played in your life. This is the day to do that. Not just a biological mom, right? But people who have played that role in your life. Let's honor this role in our world. And let's let it start with us. So, um, Shauna, I just want to ask you about what we were affectionately calling the survival mode phase, which I is what? I renamed it, actually. What, you renamed it? I what called it, it the tiny phase. The tiny phase. So what is it? What's the survival mode phase? Well, first of all, I think that you got me sitting on this because I moved so much last time, didn't you? She was like wandering. Oh, She's like going on walkabouts. Okay, so having I'm just do one little walkabout. Okay. One, so yo people, here, <laughs> if you think that you're a big pregnant woman. Uncontainable. Just take a look at that picture. Um, <laughs> I had two months to go. Yeah. Glory had uh, somewhat longer than that. Yeah. That's a Anyways, beach ball. Um, so that was survival mode right there. That's a, that's a really good picture. Um, so for me, and again, like what I'm sharing with you this morning is, is my journey. Um, it is not a perfect journey. It is not um, a journey that everybody should be taking. And that's, please, by all, please. Just know that I'm just sharing my story and everybody has a different and their own beautiful, unique story. Um, so for me, um, going into becoming a mom, again, because you've heard me speak last time of how important, like, these were my very first flesh and blood on this earth that I knew of. So I was quite excited. Just for those who are new, because you, oh, you're right. adopted and you don't because know your Because I'm adopted biological. Um, and I don't know my biological parents. So um, just to put that in perspective. Um, and again, everybody has their own experience with pregnancy and childbirth. Um, again, look at the picture, I don't need to see it much more. My mother-in-law, for example, said, like, she never felt better than, like, when she was pregnant and after giving birth. I mean, she could run the halls after she gave birth. And I say that with a slight sarcastic. And it took her 20 minutes to give birth to me. Well, there's that part of it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> my story was a little different three C-sections, recuperation afterwards, blah, blah, blah. Um, and with that, to be honest with you, I think after all three kids, we took a look at it and go, you know what? I'm pretty sure I had some postpartum going on here. Um, struggled a lot with um, body image. Like, my body did not look or feel the same. Definitely did not look the same after that. Um, I also struggled with a feeling of being a good enough mom. I am so thankful that I did not have it, that Instagram was not around or Facebook at that point. Because let me tell you, <laughs> it was hard enough to not compare myself to the other moms who had it all together and, and looked fabulous and carried their babies around, and I didn't. Um, I, I, I struggled. It was a struggle for me. I love my kids with every fiber of my being, but I did not feel like an adequate mom. I felt. Um, and you yeah. felt like on the spiritual side, you felt particularly, yeah. um, almost like under a judgment, Absolutely. right, for that? Can you um, talk about that? In part, too. I mean, look who I'm married to. You know, there's that. Um, but uh, being a pastor's <laughs> wife, <laughs> not you, honey. It's just being a pastor's <laughs> wife. Um, it, I'm just going to dial it back to, uh, I remember going to retreat, I don't know, after who was born, because honestly, like... After a while, it's like, you can't even remember what birth or what. It's a what. blur. It's kind of like a blur. But I remember going to a women's retreat afterwards, and I remember, <laughs> bless her heart, there is a woman that shared at this women's retreat. She's like, ladies, it is so important for you to take that moment in the morning and light a candle for yourself and take your quiet time with Jesus. And I walked out of there sobbing on the inside and on the outside going, oh my word, like I can barely get dressed in the morning <laughs> with everything where it should be, let alone light a candle and have my quiet time with Jesus. And it really ripped me to the core because I really felt like if I was a good mother, I should be doing that. Well, and I should be able the fire to, department, right? right? Yes. Um, I should be able to do that, and I should be able to have my ducks in line so that at that time of day, I can sit down with my Jesus and have that time. Um, 
And as time went on and I got more comfortable and all that kind of stuff, you realize, no, no, my friend, you're grabbing those moments uh, when you're nursing or attempting to nurse like I did. You're grabbing those moments in the middle of the night. You're grabbing those moments when you've locked yourself in the bathroom. You've <laughs> grabbed those moments when you're washing dishes in that survival mode. And that's what I ended up doing was grabbing my moments of Jesus when I could, not in the appropriate candle lighting time. Again, my story. I think he loved the fact that you were trying to grab moments with him. I think that's the point, right? He loves spending time with us. So whatever we're reaching for, flailing for, he's like, thank you. I want to be with you too. So that's And awesome. one other thing in regards to that that um, was so important to me, and if I can encourage um, moms kind of in this t tiny phase, um, was I was so blessed to have some moms who are in the same stage of life where I was at with kids my age, and they, our kids kind of grew up together. Well, they did grow up together. Um, but it was also comforting um, to have other women in my life that were real enough with me or, or in relationship or in community with me that would go, yeah, I get it, I'm in the same place. Or, yeah, I struggled and this is kind of where I went and these are the steps that I took. So to shoulder that together as, as women was, was an incredible thing. And this thing is bugging me now. Like it's just it's not good. designed for, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It, you need to stop moving. I know, I don't do that. <laughs> Okay, work so like let's move on to the littles phase. We've okay. gone tinies, the survival mode. What's the littles phase all about? This is like we're out of toddlerhood now, or well, kind, kind of, of small, kind small of children? ish, right? Okay. Like getting in out of out of the infant, right, into kind of toddler okay, littles yeah. phase. Um, and I know Brad and I talked about this. Like again, for our story, you know, we went from man on man to zone defense with three children. <laughs> um, that's truly <laughs> you laugh, but it's reality. Um, and spread out right <laughs> at all times you know um so for me that Sorry, was just especially because glory was always trying to flank us she's yeah. always like coming around the side yeah right using your brothers as decoys yeah so yeah truly okay. thank god she's up there <laughs> um so at that phase i think for for me um you're really i was really as a as a parent but as a mom was really working at starting to get those values into the kids, right? Like teaching kindness, teaching forgiveness, um, teaching respect, and a little story based on that. That for us really came out of um, a trip that we took down south with our kids crazy enough. We thought we could take three children, I think they were under the age of six at that point, on a road trip down to Texas. <laughs> wouldn't recommend it, but that's okay. It was an experience. Good times. Good times. But one thing that we learned down there that we like took and have done till this day, I mean, now they're all pretty much grown up, we've got one to go, um, was the whole respect of adults um, down there. Kids are always call adults like, like this would be Mr. Brad and I'd be Miss Shauna and it's just common. It's not a it's not a big deal. In fact, for us, we felt it was a little awkward when we went down there. Um, but in the end, it was like, you know what? That made our kids, they treated adults differently. It was like giving them a title gave them, oh, I have to respect, I need to, I want to respect you. You are Miss Shauna, you know, Mr. Brad, that kind of stuff. And so we trained that into our children. And, uh, you know, it would get, you know, as they've gotten older, they'll have conversations with people and they're like, oh no, just call me this. And they're like, oh no, my mother would not be happy about that. You can speak to her about that later. Um, but it has really taught them. So respect is a huge thing that you can start that very, very young um, of it, training your kids. It's not like a parental power trip. Mm -mm. It's not about us, right? It's about them learning respect. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the issue. It's not, us feeling like we're in charge. Mm -hmm. It's not, we're, we're developing people. Mm -hmm. You need to learn to respect people, in the world. right? And if you don't, if you respect don't respect honor people and honor in authority and places, people that you're in trouble, right? Like you can't, you can't actually get forward in life. So I think that was really important. And, and that was also the stage where we began um, doing, teaching about boundaries, teaching, um, you know, where they could and where they could not go and, and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go into that a little bit more as in, when we go into the next stage. Um, in regards to what I wish more at this stage, I think I truly wish that I had, um, as a mom, I mean, we taught them, Jesus is real, he is here, he loves you, um, he is with us. 
Um, but there's one thing I know that we have talked about is that I wish that I would have been, and so I encourage you moms, I wish I had been more of the mom that went, hey, how you doing, Noah? How is your day? Let's bring it to Jesus, and had gone immediately and just gone mm -hmm. talking like this to talking like this and talking like this to talking like this, like that it was just this constant. I wish I had done that more, um, yeah. if I can look back and, and, and say that. Um, and lastly, this stage for me, um, ladies, if you can find a mom that is one stage or two stages ahead of you where your kids are at, like jump them. I like just yeah. get in their face and say, I need you in my life. I need you to speak into my life. Can I get for, together for coffee with you once a month? Can I, can I like whatever works for you, that kind of thing. Um, I had, um, and actually I just texted her saying I was going to share about her. Mm. Um, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Well, because Gee, it's Phyllis. It's Phyllis. Phyllis was my public health nurse who, who became, she was also a, a friend of ours, and she was that mom. Like, so her kids were in junior high when our kids were like littles to big stage, and we got together kind of every other week for like an hour and a half of coffee, and I would just go, this is where I'm falling apart in, or this is where I need help in, or what did you do at this stage? And she never ever said, you're doing it wrong, or you need to do this. She always said, this is what I did. You figured out on you, but this is, where I, this is where I went, and this is the walk that we took. And boy, let me tell you, um, there's, a, there's a good part of our kids that are, you know, the way they are because of what we took from that um, and what I learned from that. And also, you know, another couple that we had was Albert and Erna Hyde, and we saw their kids and the way that they, the relationship that they had with their parents, and we said, we want that, so we will do what we need to do and ask them questions. What have you done? How have you walked with your kids? So find those people. Don't be shy. Don't ever feel like that you're going to be in their way or bothering them. Um, that's okay, right. Um, that um, you, they're, you're taking up too much of their time or they'll say no if they can't, but glean, glean, glean from those who are just ahead of you in life with their kids. And there's something amazing about that. Like it takes a humility because you already feel like you're failing as a mom. Now to go and admit it to someone that you feel like you're failing and that you need help feels like defeat, but it's not. It's actually the way forward, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, that's how community is supposed to work. So that's huge. And I, she modeled that really well. We, we, I, I totally agree. We dropped the ball when it comes to the turn to Jesus for everything thing. We did, but somehow we didn't think to model it as much as we should have. And so um, do better than we did. That's, that's my encouragement. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to move on to the big... Oh, wait. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Right. <laughs> Look at those faces. So we're moving on to the big space. The big space. What's the big space? So for, like, I mean, there's so many things that we can talk about in this stage, but really when Brad asked me that question, the first thing that came up to mind was boundaries of teaching your kids uh, boundaries of, A, where they could and could not go. And for example, um, just to, to, to use as a physical example, um, so we lived on a, a third of an acre in the middle of town um, with no fence dividing some of the yards. And um, our kids had to stay within our yard. And when they could do that, because I told them to, and because they were respecting the boundaries and they were okay staying within that, is when I would say, okay, now you can go to the neighbor's yard to this line. And as soon as they would start pushing and pushing, well, why can't I? I'm like, okay, no, we're back to this. So we really felt like in a lot of areas of our kids' lives, when they were comfortable within the boundaries that we had set for them, was when they were ready to take that next step out. And they were ready to respect and honor. And so then we could give them a little bit more and they were okay to live in there. And then they would push and we'd keep them there. And we'd move those fences back, move those fences back as they got older and they were willing to stay within in the boundaries that we were giving them. I think too, like the, what struck us, because we lived on a fairly busy street. So this became really real. So Noah's running towards the street now is not the time to have a conversation or a negotiation and explain why he needs to stop running. He needs to know, he, when I say stop, he stops, period. Then we can talk about why after, 
Like, so I, I think that's part of the respect thing. I don't mind explaining why. I, well, that's a really good parenting deal, right? But, but first, listen. Mm -hmm. And this is hugely important, I think, because we're also teaching our kids to, if they're, they're learning what it means to submit, they're learning what it means to obey, and if they don't obey authority figures, they don't respect authority fi figures, how are they gonna learn to submit to and, and obey God as the ultimate authority figure? They have no context for it, right? And so I, I think that was a huge, huge deal for us. I was gonna say that. Oh. That's okay. Yeah, I just took that away. Yeah. I think another thing to, I had to remind myself um, at that stage, especially as they got to kind of like the older of the big, so this is almost like preteen, um, is the fact that first and foremost, I'm their mom, not their friend. Um, the friend would come. Friend, and, and trust me, I'm reaping the benefits of it now. Um, friend comes, but I had to first and foremost be their mom, be their coach, lead them, teach them, and guide them. Um, and, and try not to be their friend, try not to be their equal um, for exactly what Brad was saying. Um, again, I, I was thankful that I did not have to work until we moved to Calgary. Um, I had time to connect with, with other moms at the same stage of the game. That was huge. Um, and also, uh, at that stage of the game, I think it was really important um, we got to work with, we were working with youth. You may be working in another area, volunteer, but um, so our kids saw so much. We had so much come in and out of our house at that point. So they saw so much about empathy and and encouragement and what did support really look like and what it what does it look like as as serving as being part of our life like it wasn't something that and now we're stepping into a serving role it was just this is what our family does and and I know I've heard our kids say that as they've gotten older but this is just what we do it's not and now we step into this it's just part of our DNA of serving and loving and supporting and encouraging in, in ministry and in wherever we're at so I think that was a, a big thing that we taught our kids then that good yeah moving okay. on yeah let's move on all right teenagers <laughs> hey look at all the hair you have the therapy stage <laughs> Joel's got it in his mouth. Love it. That's like... <laughs> That's not just waiting for that moment when the saliva hits the connection. I think we need to go one picture up because they're not teenagers there. Huh? They're not teenagers One there. more? One more, baby. There okay. we go. <laughs> <laughs> we did not warn them what was coming. This is the non-impressed stage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so... We're still sort of in this um, stage, but this is where, this is kind of, I title this, um, being on my knees in prayer and being in their face stage of yeah. the game, definitely. Um, and then the whole uh, being in their face stage is being willing to take the consequences for being in their face stage. So um, the fact that they don't always want me in their face, um, Oh, well. You got me as a mom. <laughs> so I am, and you can ask any one of them. Um, I don't, I don't give up easily. I am constantly in their or face. Ever. I'm constantly asking them how they're doing. I'm constantly <laughs> like, you know, you're not eating enough. Or you're not like, what's going on? Or your face is saying this. Or, um, nope, there's more. Nope, there's still more. Nope. I'll be like, honey, more. there's nothing there. And she's nope. right. Yeah. There's more. And, um, so the whole, yeah, and I, and I think I learned that from my mom, bless her heart, um, but was like, be in their face, be in their face, and be on your knees to Jesus for them. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more of that uh, later, but, um, and another huge thing that we have walked through with them in this stage, which I think as adults we even struggle with, is admitting when you're wrong, apologizing and then moving on from it and I think that moving on from it is a huge thing even as adults but our kids have always known and I, we and we still have to remind them of this is like I would rather you admit that you screwed up royally and you ask for forgiveness and then we move on from it than a us not knowing or b not trying to take and admit it yeah, take responsibility take responsibility apologize but then we move on from it this is not something that becomes part of your identity because this is not who you are. This is a mistake. And mistakes happen, but we move on from them and we live on from them. Yeah. And so that's something that has been huge. Um, 
Uh, for me, uh, scripture that has come to, that actually have written on the inside, well, not literally written, it's on a post-it note on the inside of my cabinet. Although I could write it permanently. Anyways, I could do that, but don't tell anyone. Um, is Proverbs 31, please don't be afraid that I'm quoting Proverbs 31, ladies. Um, Proverbs 31, verse 26, which says, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. And so that is just a scripture, because I am a very vocal person, if anybody that knows me, I'm very vocal, and that's something that Jesus keeps on putting on my heart and putting on my heart is that, Lord, I need, I know that I need wisdom, but may the words that I give, whether they are good or whether they are, are in teaching mode or whatever they are, may, be, they may, may they be done in kindness. Um, so that's huge. Um, that's a stage of life where you're struggling where, with the choices that the, your kids make. Um, you're at that stage where you don't always like the choices that they make, but you'll always love them. And again, that's a, a thing that we have in our home is, I don't always like you, but I'll always love you. Love is a never, that's not, that's always there. Liking. We, we joke around, we'll go like, hey, I like you today. <laughs> Sweet. And I love you. <laughs> Two for one. Yeah. Right? Um, but, um, and also realizing, this is where, I mean, you might have this throughout your kids' lives, but definitely in the teenage years, um, something that I've had to work on is, my kids may make those poor choices, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad mom. Um, and I have great kids. Yeah. Like, great kids. Um, but just because your kids don't make the choice that you would necessarily make does not, and you need to hear this from the bottom of your heart, does not mean that you're a bad mom. You are a great mom because you have been taking the steps that God has given you to parent and love your children, and he loves you and walks with you every step of the way. So you need to remember that. Um, I'll preach. And... And again, and this is another thing, find the women whose kids are in that stage and walk community with them. Be the shoulder to cry on. Be the shoulder to walk with. Be the shoulder to throw your hands up in the air and say, can you pray for me? I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah. And uh, I think, um, I just lost my point here. Um, at this point, I think, oh, I remember, um, you know when you have your kids and, they, and you see other pe women, they go, oh, just wait, it goes so fast. Like, just hang on tight to them. See, I remember when Joel was born, and literally in the hospital, I counted how many years till he could go to preschool. <laughs> like, I was like, four, okay, four years, I can do this. I can do four years. How hard, I mean, I can and do this. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if we can do this. <laughs> I can do this. I would definitely stay, say at this teenage stage of life, and I don't know about you other moms who have kids at this stage, the, it, it, the whirlwind has definitely developed, and I feel like we're living in this, whoa, slow down, wait, hold on, wait, not so fast, wait, hold on, slow down, wait. And I'm now turning into one of those moms, those poor people that I stop in the mall and I go, oh honey, hang on to them tight, because before you know it, I've turned into one of those women. But it, no, it no, just she, a reminder. No, she does that, <laughs> like in the, in the mall. It's awkward yeah. for my family. Um, but know that in the whirlwind, like what, how life feels like it's out of control and it's in this whirlwind of where you're at right now, um, know that your heavenly Father knows it all. He knows what you're going through. Um, he loves you unfailing without any restrictions. And he also lets us fall. And even though... We get hurt. He's right there to pick us right up again. Um, and I have, there's a, a little story, and I'm not quite sure, but if it's okay for me to quickly share it. Sure, yeah, and then we'll go to the last phase. Okay. Um, the story that quickly came to my mind for, um, it, I'm going to really condense it, but um, the realization of how much God is in control came to, you know, a couple of years ago where our youngest um, had a skateboarding accident and was brought to the place where we literally lay him at the foot of the cross and didn't know if we would have him back. And he's a walking miracle. And um, if, if there's any, been any point in my life where I have known 
that my God is real, that my God allows us to make mistakes, but that my God walks us through and carries us through and will never leave or forsake us is in that story. Um, I'll tell it to you some other day. But as a woman who has walked that path with her child, I don't think I could ever doubt, if I ever have, of the love that he has for his children and what he is willing to do and how he is willing to walk beside us. And we can move on now so I don't keep crying. Keep going. We're going to move on now? Let's okay, go. okay, okay. Let's move on. Moving on to uh, what we've called the, the graduate, this is still kind of teenager, but graduation phase. Next one. Next one. Okay. Ah. This is the uh, stage. Actually, Who's ready for that, that just happened. I'm stage. Not, yeah. That happened. I'm not even ready for it. Um, <clears throat> so we're just entering this stage. So there are so many women here today that are beyond where where I'm at. So I don't I don't really feel like I can speak to this yet because we're just getting into it. Um, but my kids will know like I suck every moment I can get with them um, out of them in, in this stage. So. Um, the, one of our conversations we have in the, even in the morning for Joel for school, if he can't have the car or whatever, and Brad's like, well, I can take him to school. I'm like, no, you're not. Well, yeah, but you're not even, I don't care. I'll go in my pajamas. Who cares? I want those five minutes with him. Um, if it's, oh, so you're going to go get gas in your car? Can I come with you? Um, whatever it is, I suck every moment that I can with my children, and I'm like constantly, like Joel's like, okay, enough, mom. Like, enough, mom. <laughs> I'm like, no, really. No, he's like, enough, mom. Um, so, again, being in their face, but just trying to just take the time that I have, walk, walk alongside them. And I, and I think we're beginning to reap these benefits of, you know, when you want to be your kid's friend. I think we're, yeah. I don't know, correct us if I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like we've sort of are maybe-ish kind of in that phase, I hope, that we can. <laughs> what do you think, Noah? No. <laughs> well, I mean, this is mother thing, but I mean, the friendship, this is... This is an emblem of it. There, he, Noah asked me to be his best man, right? And so, man, we're friends, right? And, and I, I, you and Glory, too, especially, and you mm -hmm. and Joel and you and Noah, like, mm -hmm. so for sure, for sure Definitely. that's happening. Yeah. yeah. So am I loving this stage? I mean, I truly have loved every stage. Um, there's one stage of Glory's, but I've truly enjoyed... <laughs> so glad she's upstairs today. Um, um, but I have truly, I really have, like, each stage I have been in, um, I've truly enjoyed. Um, this is my favorite. This, this really is my favorite um, stage of walking alongside. And um, I think I dream more now for them than I've ever dreamt. Um, I know I give them to Jesus. I know for um, some of the people that I talk to at work um, that know Jesus, I'm like, I feel like I've given them to Jesus every minute of today. Like, I feel like my mind is, come, for whatever reason, for whatever stage or whatever they're going through, I feel like, okay, Jesus, you've got them. Okay, Jesus, you've got them. Okay, Jesus, you've got them. I feel like, um, I feel like that. Um, and um, I feel like I, I get to do a lot of listening now, and I'm enjoying that. I could do, do a lot of listening, and, and they um, come and they'll say, so what do you think? I'm like, well this is what I've done, but you get to do you, so what do you think you should do? Um, so I would say this is actually maybe my favoritest mm. of stages. Um, is that a word? Favoritest. Okay, it we'll make now. it a word. It's Mother's Day? It's a Mother's Day. It's a Mother's, day. It's a mother's day word. And done. Um, so in the end, for, for all of you ladies out there, uh, again, just it's so cool that Brad said this in the very beginning because I... I told him that I wanted this to be part of it. Um, and I listened. You did. <laughs> was to, to please take away something else. Um, not all of us have children. But I can tell you something. There are a lot of women who now have kids in middle school that I got to play a role as a mom in their life mentoring them and walking through youth with them. And there are a lot of um, kids who have grown up that we have seen that I have been able to walk through. And, and we've told stories of some of these kids. And so please don't feel like if you don't have, you know, flesh and blood, that you don't have a maternal role in someone's life. And I would encourage you to take it on. 
even, um, to find someone and to take on that, that role in their life and um, to recognize that there are people in this world looking for that as well and to embrace that. So. Well, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Anytime. Right? As long as I can sing the left. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this works for me. You know, I, I just want to close just with one or two thoughts, and then I, I want to have a time of prayer, actually, for the, the ladies in the room. Um, and that is, the, the last thought is this, that every, in, in God's economy, in God's family, every one of you is a daughter, the, the ladies, you're a daughter before you're a mother. So you're, you, you, you have a heavenly father that wants to father you as his daughter. And ultimately, that's where the strength comes from. That's where the energy comes from. That's where identity comes from. That's where it's, and this is not just, these are not just Hallmark pretty words. He is an actual father who actually wants to father you more intentionally, more powerfully than any earthly father or earthly mother ever could. If that's, I know that's hard to believe, but it's real. There are people sitting in this room that experience that. 